Welcome to another Demarcation Media LEGO review. Today we are going to be taking a look at another Power Miner set. This is the Mine Mech. So if you saw my other Power Miner set review, you'll know that this theme was like kind of a huge part of my childhood. Like I didn't have many of the sets, but the ones that I did have, those were like my favorite sets ever. They were my first sets with minifigures. So I have a lot of fond memories of the Power Miners line. Um, this set, however, is one that I never got when I was younger. It was the, one of those ones that I always wanted to get, but you know, when you're younger, you don't really make money. So you just kind of have to get what you can, save up what money you can, and pick and choose which ones you want. And I just never ended up getting this one. So today I'm going to be taking a look at it. This is the box. It is a kind of tall box size, which we don't see often anymore. We see like this. We'll see set a lot of sets like this, but it's not often that we get ones with kind of this tall design. Power Miner's design for the boxes, I just, I love it. The bright green and all the scratches and the orange, it just really pops on the shelves. I feel like a lot of Lego set boxes look, I don't want to say generic, they just... They don't pop the same way. They're not as exciting. There's the back. Lots of really nice graphic design. Look, you see all the little rivets. Uh, we see the claw. We can use the claw to seize the monster. And we see this kind of really ugly combination build between the cave bike and the mine mech. We get to see... Oh, yeah. There's Boulder Axe on the top. Um, I do have the instructions, but I may have put them in my instructions box. So I'm not going to dig them out. But basically, they're just fairly standard Power Miners instructions. Same branding as the box. And they have all the like checklists with the rock monsters in the back. And here is the mine mech itself. So we have the mech, and then we have two minifigures. Let's go ahead and take a look at Boulder Axe first. Here he is, the little green rock monster, Boulder Axe himself. So this guy is one of the, like, what was there, five rock monsters of different colors. And now I think in the Power Miners lore, it was, there was not necessarily one of each. So this would be a Boulder Axe, I guess. All the green ones were Boulder Axe and all the blue ones were Glaciators and so on. This guy is pretty much identical to the other monsters, except for his color, which is perfectly fine by me because these guys are adorable. They look fantastic, and I really wish LEGO would bring them back. You can put all kinds of stuff in his mouth. You can put uh, minifigure heads, crystals, dynamite, piles of random bricks, pretty much whatever. Very nice printing, front and back. And here he is next to Glaciator from the last one. Now, there's something interesting. This Boulder Axe, uh, this version of him, or I should say this particular figure, his eyes are very odd because this is how Rock Monster eyes are supposed to be. They're both big and they are kind of fairly even. Now, this guy, he's got a tiny eye and a big eye, almost like he's squinting, and that's not correct. So let me bring in, I have two Fire Ox as well. Firox is the orange guy. I do have the set that uh, they came from, the Thunder Driller, but it's taken apart, so I won't be able to review that for a little while. But I've got two of them here, and you can see that none of them have the same kind of squinty extra side as Boulder Axe does. I mean, look at this. They're all pretty standard sizes and then this guy's got a squinty a squinty eye so he's not supposed to be like that it's kind of a misprint i guess but it's a great one like he looks uh, really expressive with it and i really like it and i don't know does that make him more valuable possibly lego misprints can be valuable but the question is is that a big enough misprint to actually make him valuable kind of makes him more valuable to me just because of how funny it makes him look but look at that. Look at that little bundle of rock monsters. Everybody needs a rock monster. And then our second minifigure is Dr. Brains. So 
He has a green crystal that Boulder Axe can eat. He has a pickaxe. And there's a dynamite that fits onto the mine mech in the storage clips. That's also kind of an accessory for him. Now, Brains has the most unique outfit of all the Power Miners because he has kind of a white lab coat underneath his coveralls. So the legs are the same, but the torso has a beaker on the kind of gray armor piece there to show his uh, kind of role in the team. He's got some pencils, white lab coat, and a very interesting face. He's got like this special eyepiece, very steampunk looking, and he's got the gray mustache, glasses, and then he has an absolutely fantastic scared face. Look how high his eyebrows go. Oh yeah, you can barely see his eyebrows here, and now they're shooting up to the top there. And he has, that's just a great expression. The Power Miner's scared faces were absolutely just the best. Around the back, we get to see a beaker in like a saw symbol, again, showing his role in the team. Uh, Brains actually, after Power Miners ended, went on to join the Atlantis crew, which is the other kind of Lego theme that was a huge thing that I collected when I was younger. So yeah, it's really cool to get this minifigure. He is not exclusive to this set, but that's just kind of how Lego did things. And I guess they kind of still do it that way. Less so now, but like the main characters would come in almost every set. So you, if you collected all of the sets, you'd have like three or four of each. Um, and then you could just pop and swap some parts and make your own custom guys. So yeah, overall, very good minifigure. Stands out a lot from the other miners. Here is the mine mech itself. So this does not use a ton of pieces. It's a 67 piece set and some of those parts go to the minifigures. So it, it's a it's a small set in terms of parts, but the size of this mech is pretty good. There's the minifigure, comes up to the knee. Actually, you know what, we're gonna go ahead and put him in there. We get the cool roll cage piece. There's a little light on top. We can sit Dr. Brains in here. There's some kind of levers for him to sort of hold onto. He can't really get them in his hands that well, but it's enough. And whoa, knock it right over. So there he is in the mech, looking pretty cool. He's got his dynamite here. You can clip the pickaxe here. There's a number two, because this is set number two. You can see that on the box. Um, and then we've got some more stickers here. And then these down here are the rough glow-in-the-dark stickers. So if you shine a light on them, the white parts will glow, which is really cool. And I didn't know that about the Power Miner sets until recently. We've got hip joints, and then, I don't know if you want to call these knee, I guess not really, They're, it's more like ankles, because we have hip and ankle joints. The box shows you kind of angling the legs like that, so we get kind of a right angle, and then the feet can sit on the ground. There's also some product images online where the leg is built like like this and then it goes backwards like that so it's like that oops i'm going off camera that is not correct that's not how the instructions show you're supposed to do it like this this mech is very awkward but it has kind of a it there's a charm to its awkwardness it actually stands up pretty well you can get it into some nice walking poses let's see can i get it to stand up like this yeah look at that it can walk I think I can get him to stand on one foot if I do it right, which clearly I am not doing it right at the moment. I got him into all kinds of weird poses, and of course, when he's on the camera, that's when I fail to get him to stand up at all. Anyway, you'll just have to take my word for it. He can get into some nice poses, and the arm can articulate like this. We have a spinny little blade on the end there. You spin it by this gear. We have the claw, which is kind of stacked, so it looks a little weird, but you can grab the monster with it and carry him around. Looks kind of plain around the back, but it doesn't look ugly around the back, so I will take that 100%. Now, the one thing that confuses me about this mech is it's a cave mech, right? Which, first of all, that's a great concept, really cool concept. I'm also a sucker for mechs. But where are the, like, floodlights on this thing? It's got a little, like, warning light up here, but there's no directional lights. 
like what the granite grinder had. So does this just walk around in the dark? Like you could have, Lego could have stuck some lights on the shoulders here, just shining out over. And that would have been great. I just, where, yeah, where are the lights? It'll just stumble around in the darkness unless it's meant to go with other machines. But that's really, that's just a minor nitpicking, kind of overthinking it. It's just such an iconic vehicle at this point. And I'll I'll spare you too much gushing, because obviously I have mostly good things to say about Power Miners, because it was just such an awesome LEGO theme. And to this day, they are still some of the coolest sets. Well... There you have it. That is the Lego Power Miners Mind Mech. I guess I really don't need to say a ton more. I mean, it's pretty clear with these Power Miner sets that I absolutely love them. They are just so fun. They're so creative. And they have rock monsters. Like, what more could you ask for? Unfortunately, this set in particular has become quite expensive. The Granite Grinder is a little easier to find. Like I said, in that review, you can get it without too much trouble but this one this one is hard to get there was something about this set i don't know if there was a limited release in america or what but all the listings like on bricklink are in other countries and the ones in the u.s are pretty expensive which is a bummer because this is one of the most iconic of the power miners sets it even showed up in the uh adventures of clutch powers lego movie so it's a pretty desirable set, and it's fairly expensive. It's kind of worth it in some ways, I guess. It depends on the price. It depends on the price. If you can get it, I would say don't pay any more than 25 for this. Any higher than that doesn't feel worth it. Um, but if you can get it for under that, I 100% recommend it. It is such a fun little mech to pose. It can stand up really well, and it just looks fantastic. Now, I kind of want to track down the Atlantis set that has Dr. Brains so I can compare the original Brains with the Diver version, but we'll see. We will see. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.